everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, today I will read from a book titled Rights, Writings, uh, Reflections on Culture and Politics, 1894-1959, by Kenneth Frampton, published by Columbia Books on Architecture and the City. Originally written as a series of introductions to the five-volume collection of Rights, Writing, published in 1992, the essays by Kenneth Frampton are gathered here as a critical survey of the architect's written and spoken work, a body of text that testifies to Wright's staggering prolificacy, pleasure in argument, diversity of interests, and desire to engage with timely political debates. Along these five essays, Wright's writings provides a visual record of Wright's literacy output, demonstrating the range of media he employed in the act of making architecture. Read together, it presents a history of the architect through the essays, books, letters, lectures and speeches he wrote as well as the material and social cultures he navigated. In 2012, Avery Architectural and Fine Arts Library, together with the Museum of Modern Art, co-acquired the singularly expansive Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation archives. Among the more than 32,000 Wright drawings, 300,000 sheets of correspondence, 285 films, 40,000 photographs and records of the Taliesin associated architects are 2,784 manuscripts of Wright's published and unpublished works. The manuscripts document the evolution of Wright's thought in written form, from first drafts to editor's proofs to final publication versions, and they reveal the intellectual journey that Wright traveled as he prepared lectures, essays and books over the course of his career. From the manuscript for his first speech to his last written work, Wright's prolific bibliographic legacy is interwoven and examined in Avery's stacks and archives. The essays in this book help us reframe and discover new ways of reading Wright's extensive library project alongside the political, material and social worlds he navigated, and it is only with the growing accessibility of this archive that such a focused examination of Wright's ideas is possible. Frank Lloyd Wright has been a sustained object of Kenneth Frampton's reflections on the large cultural and ideological states of modern architecture for over a quarter of a century. The protean American architect has been as central to his writings since the first edition of Modern Architecture, a Critical History in 1980. As to his teaching in lectures, seminars and analytical model making at Columbia University. Needless to say, Frampton was among those who most enthusiastically joined the welcoming committee when it was announced in 2012 that the thousands of documents that formed the Frank Lloyd Wright Foundation archives were to be transferred to the Avery Architectural and Fine Arts Library as part of an innovative co-stewardship arrangement with the Museum of Modern Art. Coincidentally, it was also the 40th anniversary of Frampton's own arrival to Morningside Heights. To pair one of the most influential architectural critic historians of modernity with one of the towering figures of modern architecture was one of the myriad ways in which the acquisition of Wright's writings and papers has enriched both the Avery Library and the University. Despite the brevity of the five texts gathered here, they offer a veritable compendium of key themes for treating Wright's idiosyncratic genius in relation not only to the stakes of modernism in architecture, but also to the larger challenges of democratic society. As relevant in Wright's trajectory from the Gilded Age of the late 19th century via Depression to the Cold War, in full force when he left the scene after seven days of practice with his death in 1959. As overwhelming as the bibliography of Wright is, some 1,085 books in the online catalogue of Columbia University and about twice as many articles in the Ivory Index to architectural periodicals, there are many threads in these prefaces that have yet to be fully explored. 
One major rationale for bringing the vast Wright archive into the Avery Library was to open Wright's work to new lines of inquiry and into contexts that the often largely monographic approach has not fostered to the fullest extent possible. In historical terms, Frampton suggested, for example, a study of the evolution of Wright's ideas about alternatives to university-based design education in relationship to the most powerful models on the horizon when the Taliesin Fellowship was put into place around 1932, namely the then-threatened Bauhaus as well as Eliel Sarin and Scrambrook Academy. Frampton told us at one point that Wright's thought seems even now to be surprisingly fresh and insightful, something that might be well said equally of these prefaces spent 25 years ago. Here are to be found invitations to look more deeply at Wright's reflections on the emancipatory myth of American democracy, on his fascination with Soviet Russia and the various forms that a categorical attack on land and money speculation might take, on his engagement with radical theories of social credit, of land management, of pacifism and on the sanguine embrace of new technologies. Frampton's synthetic readings of Wright's often convoluted texts invite us equally to bring historical contextualization and reflections on untimely resonances into dialogue. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.